Hey there, everyone. Lee Stranahan. Nice to see you on a Sunday night. I can't technically see you, but you can see me, and that's close enough. Uh, so I want to talk to you. I wanted to do a late night Lee because I sort of mentioned it earlier. I did a good video earlier that you might want to check out. I, I mistitled it, actually. Uh, but I mention it. It's currently at the top of my Twitter feed. It's talking about the new Joe Rogan, Russell Brand videos that are out. Russell Brand talking about the freedom, the truckers convoy. And uh, Joe Rogan explaining his perspective on the Spotify controversy, where a lot of musicians are quitting Spotify. And I talked about that. But but. Someone had earlier, I've been talking about Russia and Ukraine lately. And by the way, if you're watching this on Sunday night, I'm going to be on Alex Jones's show as a guest tomorrow at 2 p.m. East. Love going on with Alex. And I'll be talking about the Russia-Ukraine thing. But let's talk about sex, shall we? Yikes. Okay. And let me explain why. Earlier tonight, I made a joke. I said this earlier. I made a joke. There was really a joke about the idea of gender fluidity. You know, we live in a weird age right now where when I was growing up, it was confusing enough just with dudes and chicks, right? Anyone who's a dude or chick out there, which is all of you, you know what I'm talking about. That was confusing enough. Now it's like 47 genders you have to choose from, and it's too much. And I was making a joke about gender fluidity. And I, I, I made the point that, a because I'll tell you why, a friend of mine had said she was going to go out on a date, a blind date with somebody. And she said, wish me luck. And I thought about it. And I said to her, look, let's be honest. You're a woman. You don't need luck. There's an old joke that one of the differences between men and women, that's a gender difference, is a woman knows for sure whether the date's going to end in sex, right? Now, again, you can quibble on that point, but it's a good joke because it's true. When men and women go out, the guy can want to have sex, but, you know, assuming a consensual, no violent rape thing, uh, which, which we don't want for anybody, assuming that, though, guys go home alone a lot. They don't have any choice. Women, if you're going home alone, it's because you didn't lower your standards enough. And one of my followers on Twitter said that I'm obsessed with sex. And I thought about it because I don't think I am. I think I think about sex a fairly normal amount. But because I host a radio show, the backstory, because I host a radio show, I I, let, me, let me put it like this. I don't shy away from sex. And let me talk about freedom of speech for a second. One of the most, you know, everyone's talking, right now, we're at a point where talking about COVID-19, I don't like the discussion or lack thereof because I'm just trying to figure stuff out. Well, if you're concerned about the same thing, and you probably are because a lot of people are, they think the level of discussion on COVID-19 or on politics is bad. Well, if those are bad, the level of discussion on sex is worse. It's very hard to have an adult, rational conversation without falling into two traps. One is the uh, prudery trap, which by people who are obsessed with sex but in the negative direction— and they want to control other people's sex lives and so on. I'm not down with that at all and never have been. And ha and people I know who are Republicans aren't down with that either. One of the differences between the new breed of Republicans, see, I said breed, see what I did there? But the, the new breed of Republicans and the old breed of Republicans is most Republicans I know today, like take whether someone's gay or not, I don't know any Republicans who care too much whether someone's gay. And they were, aren't even opposed. There was no real Republican opposition that I saw to civil unions. The idea that if you're gay and you're with somebody and uh, they're in the hospital, you can't go visit them or you can't inherit property from them. That seems stupid to a lot of Republicans 
who are what I would call modern Republicans. They never had an issue with civil unions. But the other side is what I will call the crazy, I won't even call it libertarian, libertine side, where they just take it too far the other way. And that's where you get school board meetings about that book on being genderqueer, which a graphic novel featuring like a 10 or 11 year old uh, blowing an adult. And it's right there, right in the graphic novel that's in schools. Now, again, I'm fairly open minded about sex, but no. And I have a real simple demarcation point, which is consensual. There's no way kids can consent. It's not possible, right? They don't know enough. And it's part of why the discussion about sex, where they're trying to introduce it, or this idea, for instance, that there are 12 and 13-year-olds getting double mastectomies or chemical castration because they've made up their mind at 13 that they're not really a man, they're a woman, or whatever. That that level of transgender insanity and medical malpractice, let's call it what it is. If a doctor is giving a 13-year-old girl a double mastectomy because the 13-year-old girl thinks she's a, a dude, you're committing medical malpractice. You're violating the Hippocratic Oath of first, do no harm, and second, do no double mastectomies on a 13-year-old. That's crazy. And yet we have people pushing for that, literally pushing for that. And it completely gets rid of the concept of consent. But on the other hand, sex has traditionally been a way. I interviewed a great journalist, Kate Coleman, a few years ago at her house in Berkeley. Kate knew the Black Panthers. And I've talked a lot about the Black Panthers over my career and the myths about them. But she said, Kate's older. She's in, I think she's in her 80s now. She was in her 70s when I interviewed her. And she said, bluntly, she said, when you want to control people, one of the ways you control is who they fuck. And she talked about cults, whether it's the Jonestown cults in Guyana, religious cults of all kinds, And the Black Panthers, she said, they control, look, the Weather Underground. So let's talk about that for a second. The Weather Underground, Bill Ayers and Bernadine Dorn and Kathy Boudin. One of the things that they required when you joined the weather was that you fuck everybody. I'll say that again. If you came in as a couple, let's say it's Bill Bill and Bernadine join to use two names pulled out of a hat, let's use, say, Bill and Bernadine join, they would require that not just Bernadine, but Bill fuck everybody. So if I wanted to fuck Bill, he has to do that. And they did that, by the way, to break down. Look, if Bill wanted to fuck some dude, okay, again. But this is a method of cult's use of psychological control right? They want to break the people down. And so that's what they did to the Weather Underground. By the way, I'm convinced that Bill and Bernadine, whose stepson, I guess, is now the district attorney in San Francisco, Cheza Boudin, I'm convinced that they're married in a sense because they all had... And by the way, they used to... There's plenty of stories about this them driving down the road in the van and everybody's having sex in the back. Now, if that sounds hot, although they're hippies, so it's kind of smelly hot, but still, just saying, there was a lot of talk about crabs with the hippies, and I don't think they made that up. But think, ponder that for a second. But if that sounds hot, well, the problem is it wasn't voluntary. It was a requirement. And part of why they did it is to break down bourgeois values. Now, that's the, that's the other end. Again, but it's the same principle. As soon as you get rid of consensuality, right? And as soon as you do it to try to break down bourgeois values, this is a problem with a lot of 
where the gay rights movement has gone. And I know gay people who think the exact same thing. Uh, the gay rights movement became an anti-Western values, hatred of religion. Now, by the way, religion's been used to control people through sex. And by the way, of course, as we know, let's talk about that for a second. Reli- when you talk about religion and sex, you can't not talk about all the child fucking they were doing. Because we know about the Catholic Church, but it's not just the Catholics. It's the Protestants as well. Those people are dangerous. Because any anybody who simultaneously is telling you, you've got to remain celibate, you've got to be celibate, but don't see that that celibacy is actually leading to the rape of children, there's a problem. And this is why I said to the person, you're the one who's obsessed with sex. Because me wanting to have a, look, you can't talk about the priest scandals without talking about sex. And unfortunately, one of the, it's one of the areas where our freedom of discussion, I can't say the word fucking on my radio show. The FCC would fine us. I can say having sex, which is, by the way, the same exact thing. The idea that, that some words, I can say poop. I can't say shit on the radio. Poop is shit. You know that. And I'm not going there in terms of the, the sex discussion because not my thing. But okay. But that way of controlling people through language is very disturbing. And so I'm not going to stop talking about sex when it comes up. And I'm not going to stop pointing out that it's right at the center. Abortion. You can't talk about abortion properly without getting into sexuality. You can't talk about a lot of these school board issues, right? You can't even talk about what should probably be taught at school about sex without talking about sex. So what I'm going to say is, let's hope going forward we can have discussions that aren't based on phony judgment. What I mean by phony judgment is a lot of people use judgment as a way of trying to control other people and to hide bad stuff they're into. And that's where the Catholic and, and the Protestant it's all over all religions. Muslims have it as well. There's stuff in Judaism. Every religion, where they're trying to control sexuality, there's usually somebody trying to control the sexuality so they can have non-consensual sex with people. Right? Am I wrong on that? So this is not, it's not late night. I'm not trying to turn you on here. I'm not even using my low... I, I can, you know, modulate. If I'm talking to a girlfriend on the phone, for instance, I'm, I'm pretty good with modulating my voice. I'm not even trying to do that here. I don't even talk about details on sex because who the hell wants to know that? Well, you, if you're saying yes, I guess text me or something. But, but most people aren't interested because I'm not that interested. Whoever was saying this to me, I don't need to know the intimate details of their sex life. But... The topic in general is not something that I'm obsessed with. It's something we're all obsessed with. And you know why? Biology. None of us would be here if it weren't for sex, right? There's no immaculate conceptions out there, correct? I think I'm right about that. So anyway, don't fear discussion. And when I say adult discussion, I make as many jokes on the subject as anybody But do you know why? Part of it is it's easier for people to have a a a goofy conversation about sex. Someone cracking jokes is easier and more comfortable than a serious conversation. And especially when we get into issues that have to do with relationship psychology, nervous laughter is par for the course. So anyway, that's a little bit of an intro. I'm going to be on Alex tomorrow not talking about sex, talking about Russia and Ukraine. And again, I'm about to launch a bunch of citizen journalism school stuff. And I'll tell you one other thing I'm going to be launching. Let me mention this, if you're still around.
I'm going to be doing, uh, and I say this as I'm drinking my coffee here, uh, that are what I'm, what I'm thinking of in my head. I haven't figured out the exact name. It could be this. But talks over coffee. This is where I'm going to be doing very affordable, like $10 courses, where I talk about some things that I know about, like you and I are sitting down over coffee. An example would be homeschooling. A lot of people right now I've noticed are interested in homeschooling. Well, I've got 30 years or so experience as a homeschooling parent. My kids were homeschooled up until my divorce. Uh, My kids were homeschooled. And my oldest son, Shane, who's about to turn 30, was homeschooled almost his entire life. And I come from a weird educational background where I wasn't homeschooled, but... I did drop out of high school in when I was 15 to start college. So I've been reading about and experiencing homeschooling for a long time. A lot of people seem new to it. And they're just figuring it out now because of the COVID-19 thing and all the school board stuff I've been talking about. But what this course is going to be It's like you and I sat down for an hour or so, and I just talked to you about things that I learned as a homeschooling parent. For instance, I'll give you one example. I can talk about the mistakes that I made and that my wife made as homeschooling parents and how you can avoid mistakes. For instance, I see a lot of people who are new homeschoolers try to do school at home. In other words, They try to emulate the educational environment in a school. And that's a huge mistake because that educational environment was phony. That was created. And I'll I'll talk about Thomas Dewey and the philosophy of education and everything else. And there's a reason school sucks. It was designed to create workers and consumers. Cogs and wheels. It was not designed to create individuals. And you and your kids are individuals. That's not what school's designed for. It's designed to crank out consumers and to crank out workers to work in a factory. But we are seeing where that whole thing has fallen. So that's why we unschooled. And I talk about I'll talk about that a little bit in this course, but the whole point is these courses are things you'll be able to listen to in about an hour and pick up a lot of practical advice on whatever the subject is. And so that's all coming soon because I may be launching. I got a bunch of stuff that's about to launch. I've been working anyway. Love you guys. Have a good night. I'll talk to you later. Bye bye.